Hey everybody, welcome back to G-Tech, and today I've got another episode of Talking Tech with Tubers for you guys, and today I'm joined by Danny Lee, aka Nerd on a Budget. I've been watching a lot of his stuff recently, so it's actually pretty awesome that he agreed to sit down and answer some of these questions to be a guest on this show. But I'm not gonna waste any more of your time, let's be real, it's Danny you wanna hear from, so I'm just gonna let him take it away. Hey George, thanks for having me, and hey what's up G-Tech viewers, my name is Danny Lee and I run the Nerd on Budget YouTube channel. The channel focuses on mostly PC tech, so that's building PCs, uh, testing and benchmarking them, product reviews, and uh, uh, quite a bit of deal hunting. In terms of how long I've been running my channel, uh, I started in January of 2016, near the end of January, so uh, we're in July 2021 now, that's five and a half years. Before YouTube, and still currently, uh, I am a structural engineer for an aerospace company. What got me interested in tech in the first place was definitely my interest for gaming, and I didn't start gaming on the computer. I started on console, like I think most people did, uh, especially, in the early 90s. So my mom got my older brother and I the original Nintendo and um, then the Super Nintendo, N64, stuff like that. And we played the crap out of them. My mom was one of those types of parents who was really afraid to let us go outside because she thought we would either hang out with the wrong crowd, do drugs, get kidnapped or killed or something like that. So she was okay with us being cooped up in our room just playing video games all day. So that's what me and my brother did. Um, so we played a lot of games growing up, but then uh, eventually we got a family computer and um, one of my older cousins actually introduced me to uh, the original Warcraft, Orcs and Humans. So my first introduction to video games on the computer was actually RTSs. So that was my favorite genre for a really long time. So I went from like Warcraft, Warcraft 2, uh, Command Conquer, uh, Total Annihilation, definitely the StarCraft series, leading up to Warcraft 3, which then led me to really get into computers because when World of Warcraft came out in 2004, I really wanted to play it, but the requirements to play that compared to like the older RTS games, uh, it, it was definitely a step up. So before that, I didn't really have to worry or care because any game I threw at our computer, it could play. But when I got the World of Warcraft, I remember playing it on our family computer. It was a stuttery mess. I'm pretty sure I was playing in like the 10 to maybe 15 FPS. It was really bad. Um, so I definitely needed to learn about computers at that point to improve our family computers. I could play World of Warcraft. It ended up being that I we I just needed to upgrade the RAM. Our system had 256 megabytes in it. I just needed to put another stick in, get it up to 512, and it ran it like at 30 FPS with which at that time was like super smooth. But that's definitely what got me in interested in computers. What gets me the most hyped about new PC components or advancements in PC tech is definitely what they're able to do at the lower end. Like it's cool and stuff to have all the higher end hardware and to be able to just blast like hundreds of FPS through all the games and, and benchmarks. But what I find really interesting and fun to play with are the lower end graphics cards. It's really interesting to see how capable they become compared to like the highest end stuff from, from maybe four or five years ago. Like the fact that something that costs maybe six, seven hundred dollars four or five years ago, now only costs 150 to 200 dollars. I think that's really cool, and I like trying to squeeze out as much performance in the lower end hardware as possible. If I have a real excess of parts, I'll try to put a build together and then put it on my local marketplace. I found though that I, I haven't been uh, selling and flipping computers as much as I did when I started the channel. What I've been trying to do now is uh, what I would call like social experiments in my local marketplace. So I've, I've made quite a few videos where I've given away computers. At the end of the day, I don't get that however many hundred dollars for the build, but I do get uh, fun content that I make. The viewers really love it. And then, you know, if it hits off, then the YouTube ad rev and stuff uh, that comes in and it, it pays for itself. In terms of what are some of my favorite components that I've worked with, I think uh, my my kind of recent build, uh, the vertical PC case, which is my main build, uh, that was a really fun one just because it was the first time working on a ver vertical form factor. The build in the Lian Lee TU 150, uh, that case has a handle, which is really important for me as a person who goes to a lot land parties so uh, that was very memorable as well. My favorite types of videos that I make on the channel by far is the land party story series. Now in terms of views it's not the highest ranking ones it's actually one of like the lower ranking series. When I'm attending the land it's super fun but
but I love that series because it is documenting, you know, the candid experience of going to a LAN party with your best buds and nerding out for the entire weekend. And I know down the line, like 10, 15, 20 years from now, when I go back and watch these videos and when my friends who attend these LAN parties go back and watch it, uh, we're really gonna appreciate the fact that it is documented in some form. Um, I'm just glad that I'm able to bring that to the viewers, especially the ones out there who have never been to a LAN party and probably won't ever be able to because they don't know enough people who are into PC gaming uh, or they don't have a PC themselves. What does your personal gaming slash editing machine look like and what are the specs? I actually kind of somewhat recently put together the system that I'm using now as my daily driver. And it has a Ryzen 5 5600X in it, as well as a RTX 2060 non-super founders edition, and then 32 gigabytes of RAM. I don't really need the highest end hardware. I do keep the high end hardware around just because uh, if I ever do any testing where I need to remove a bottleneck, like either in the CPU or GPU, then it's good to have on hand. But for my daily uses, for like my editing, Photoshop stuff, um, and then the games that I play, uh, that system is just fine and uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely by no means anything crazy. So for some behind the scenes stuff, uh, in terms of the gear that I used to film, I used the Canon Rebel T7i, but I used the Canon zoom lens EFS 10 to 18 millimeter. This is the lens I use for everything. I rarely ever take it off. I tried to use other lens, but this ultra wide lens, it just does everything so perfectly, especially since I do uh, quite a bit of vlog content. When I'm holding the camera in my hands, it's it's best to like get, you know, not a super zoomed in look at my face. And for like shots like this, when I have like a computer next to me or something like that, it can fit a lot in the shot. So I, I rarely ever take off this uh, 10 to 18 millimeter super wide uh, or ultra wide lens or whatever you call it. I'm not a camera guy by any means. Um, I just use it as like a tool. I'm not super into it. But in terms of other recording gear, so right here, I'll bring it down. This is a Deity mic. It's the V-Mic D3. But I recently got uh, sent some of these to check out. These are LED light sticks. So I think they're nice for creating, you know, a little bit more uh, ambiance in the room. And I'm using this one to kind of get a, I'm, I'm learning a little bit more about lighting just because a lot of people have complained my, my lighting sucks. Hopefully this video is a little bit better than some of the ones that I've released on my channel where it looks like I'm in the dark, like in a cave or something. I have some of these panels, which are kind of like RGB panels as well. Uh, kind of like as key lights, I think that's what they call it, or filler lights. What is one device that you use in your video making process, which you cannot live without, or is incredibly convenient to have? In my video making process, what device? I don't use any, anything else that's like super specialty. Uh, I know there is a lot of specialty like camera gear, um, but I'm just way too cheap to buy them. So I, I don't have any like secret uh, you know, gadgets or anything like that, that helps make this any easier. I'm trying to look around and think of if there's any other devices. I think the obvious answer for me would be the computer, but I'm not sure if that's what you're, you're trying to ask because yeah, definitely all editing happens on the computer as well as, you know, video planning and things like that. Yeah, I think I'm just have to give a lame answer of like either the camera or uh, just like computers. What is your video making routine? How do you stay organized with each step? In terms of making the videos, I always start with a concept, which I have tons of video concepts that I just write down anytime I think of it. Even if the video idea sucks, I write it down on either my Blackboard over there or on Google Notes. And I, I just have this running list of like, by this point, like hundreds of ideas. And I only ever get to like 10% of them. Most of them are just sitting on back burner for, for life. Once I pick a topic of video I wanna do, instantly in my mind, I just think of kind of the whole storyboard of the video. Like what am I trying to hit on? I am pretty scatterbrained. I don't do everything super linearly. Instead of finishing a whole task off, I'm usually doing uh, a whole bunch of different things and up until they're all completed. So it may not be the most efficient way of doing it, but I definitely approach YouTube from a hobbyist standpoint because it isn't my full-time job. So I don't, I probably don't have the most efficient like workflow in terms of like churning, being able to churn out tons of videos. I would definitely need to change my kind of like workflow if I ever wanted to pump out more than one video a week. Uh, so, uh, Thanks for asking this question because that's something I definitely need to work on, especially if I do want to transition to full-time YouTube. What advice would you give to small tech channels just starting out? I don't really have any secret advice or answers to give for this one. There's the two generic pieces of advice, which I think are worth repeating because I don't think people take them seriously enough. You have to be consistent for algorithm reasons as well as 
just growing your own personal skill reasons. So that's kind of a no brainer. I don't know why, but new content creators, they get super excited. They're consistent for like the first few months and then I see a big drop off. You gotta be consistent, but to help you be consistent, you gotta be passionate because you have to be genuinely excited about what you're making content on. Um, like for me, for example, all this PC stuff, like building PCs, testing hardware, buying and selling on Craigslist, throwing these LAN parties. I was doing it well before I did YouTube. After YouTube, if YouTube ever dies or if I ever stop deciding to upload to my channel, I will still be doing all this PC stuff well beyond that. So whatever you decide to do your YouTube channel on or whatever content creation platform you do on, uh, just make sure it was something that you were genuinely interested in. Um, it helps if it was something that you've love doing for a long time and then now you just turn on the camera and just share it with the world. When I'm not running my channel, who am I behind the scenes? So I am a husband. I, I'm recently married to my wife. No kids yet though. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm a full-time engineer outside of uh, YouTube. That's my main career and then uh, other than that, I think what I show on my channel is exactly who I am. I don't change my personality or my persona for it. I'm just a nerd that likes to play video games and likes computers. What's your taste in music and what sort of songs do you listen to? I really like EDM music. Uh, I like specifically house, progressive house, tropical house. Kind of like the upbeat, happier sounding songs. I'm not really a fan of other EDM genres like hard style or dubstep and things like that. Those have too jarring of noises and too much bass for me. I like the stuff that like sounds smooth and it just like sounds good when you put it on for like the summer. <laughs> favorite shows and movies. So I don't really have many like favorite shows and movies. I can watch pretty much anything. We do watch a lot of stuff, me and my wife, because uh, she has a really big family and each of her siblings have like a different account that they all share. So we, we have access to like HBO Max, Amazon Prime, uh, Netflix, uh, Hulu, Disney Plus, you name it. So we do watch a lot of stuff. Um, not really sure if any of the shows are really favorites. There's a lot of good stuff. Like we watch uh, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Dark, Black Summer recently, the second season. So those are all really good. Really hard to name a favorite. I would probably name SpongeBob as my favorite because in terms of like references that I use in real life with my friends and stuff, I probably reference SpongeBob the most. And where are my favorite video games? So as I said earlier, World of Warcraft is a huge one. Definitely the most time I've spent in any video game ever, just World of Warcraft and the expansions. Also, uh, I think the Grand Theft Auto series because uh, I started playing the first one, actually I played Grand Theft Auto 2 on the original PlayStation. Uh, that was the top-down 2D one. But then uh, I started playing the 3D version, which is Grand Theft Auto 3 on the PlayStation 2 afterwards. And just the whole open world thing like sucked me into that genre of open world free roam games. It's so much so that it's really hard for me to play linear games that kind of limit where you can go and limit what you can do to like the linear storyline. I like games that let me do whatever the heck I want and go wherever I want. Um, so what do I like doing when I'm not making videos? Personal hobbies outside of what I do on the channel. As I became more serious in content creation, I found that my time and other hobbies started dwindling down. Uh, I used to do a lot more. Like I used to rock climb indoor and outdoor, bouldering specifically. Uh, I used to be a part of a martial arts gym where I did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as well as like Muay Thai, uh, boxing and other martial arts. I used to have a motorcycle, went to the track and stuff. But as I started spending more time on YouTube, I started doing less of all of those things. So I'm not as interesting anymore. I'm just a nerd who's on his computer most of the time. But that's what happens when you have a full-time job and you are limited to what hobbies you can do. I guess it goes to show what I value or am the most passionate about because computers is the longest running thing I've been interested in. Computers and video games. All the other things I picked up for like several years and I did them but um, I never did them as long-term as gaming and uh, computers. But um, other than that, I do like to work out and try to stay in shape. What I do on YouTube as well as what I do in my engineering career, that's very like sedentary. I'm sitting and looking at a computer for many hours of the day. So I do try to kind of offset with uh, working out and I have a home gym downstairs in my garage. That was like the first thing I wanted to put in the house when we moved in here. Uh, so work out, go to work, make YouTube videos and play with PCs and games and stuff.
But that is going to be it, I think, for the interview. So, George, I want to thank you for having me on your channel. GTech viewers, hope you enjoyed the interview. If you are a nerd on a budget viewer that somehow found your way to this video, hope you guys enjoyed because I haven't done a Q&A for a really long time. So this was a great opportunity to do something like that uh, and share a little bit more about myself. Um, but yeah, I'll pass it back to you, George, for you to close out the video. All right, thank you so much, Danny, for coming on the show today. I'm super happy to have been able to talk to you, and I hope all of you really enjoyed what he had to say. Personally, I find it really interesting that he's been gaming pretty much his whole life, so it only makes sense that making videos on PC gaming and the hardware that runs them would be the path that he would choose for a hobby in his adult life. I'm also really surprised that he didn't have any specific tools or accessories that he uses in his video making workflow. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. If anything, Danny's just showing you that you don't need all these specific tools and gadgets to just make videos. So anyways, I just wanted to thank Danny once again for agreeing to help me out with this video. It's so cool getting to talk to all of these tech YouTubers and learn a little bit about their behind the scenes, how they make their videos, their rise on YouTube, all the stuff you don't normally think about. But anyways, that's just about gonna do it for now, so if you like this video, you know what to do, and if you want to see more stuff like this, make sure to get subbed down below, because I love making this stuff for you guys, and as always, have a good one. Honey,